Hey, let's get geared up and make a custom order of masks. First I'm going to grab my fabric to cut my pieces out. I fold my piece of fabric in half so that the good sides touch and then keeping in mind the direction of the pattern I cut out these pieces with my pattern block. They're already facing together so I'm just going to sew those good sides together with a quarter inch front seam. And then when those are all sewn together, I'm going to open them up and iron to one side. Some people are staunch iron the seams open folks, but I think that it makes a stronger seam if you fold it over, especially because I'm going to then top stitch that seam to keep it in place and to make sure the masks keep their shape. So I'm going to work through all of the fronts and back pieces. And then for this particular project, the masks are going to get a shop logo for a Fab Lab. It's a cute little tiki guy with a jackhammer and I love him. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out of vinyl using my Cricut machine and painstakingly weed all of the little details out of it. After I weed out all the excess vinyl for 22 of these little guys, I'm going to fold my fronts in half, place the logo on them, and press them with my heat press. So I'm going to do that for the rest of them. Then I'm going to take my front pieces that are finished and put them good sides together with my black back pieces and sew the top and bottom seams shut. So it'll be like a tube. Then we're going to iron again, and this is the most fiddly piece, but it's probably the most important to the actual like fit and shape of the mask. So I'll flip it inside out, use a bone folder to push all the seams out, and then carefully press those seams flat. This is my least favorite part. It takes a really long time, but it's really important to the actual fit and finish of the mask. Now I will go ahead and top stitch those seams in place top and bottom. This is where my sewing machine started to seize up and I thought I had fixed it as a true mechanical genius, but I was wrong. She was busted in a way that I myself could not fix, so I brought in a new friend. This machine is actually so fast. So I whipped through the rest of them and then I'll start prepping my masks and marking where the nose wire channel should go. I just hold my nose wire up to the mask and clip on each side of it where my seams should start and end. And then I'll go ahead and sew a little channel for my nose wire to slide into, just a little wider than it. And then I'll wiggle that nose wire in between my layers of fabric and in that little channel that I've sewn. And once they all have nose wires, I'll start tucking the ends, roll and clip, and then I will sew these seams shut leaving enough space between the end of the mask and that closing seam to thread my elastic through. After snipping any loose threads and just generally cleaning up the masks, I'll start threading my elastic through. I use a blunt-ended darning needle so it doesn't pierce through my fabric. While I'm working on these repetitive tasks, I usually listen to audiobooks, podcasts, or I watch a heck of a lot of X-Files. And then after they've all had their elastic, I'll put an adjustable toggle through both strings and knot it. After singeing all the ends, I'll go ahead and start cleaning up and packaging these. I'll go over each one with a lint roller, just make sure I've gotten all the loose threads and linty bits off, and then they go in their own little flap seal bag. Once they're all packed up, I'll write a thank you letter with my little logo, fill the envelope with some little goodies, and then seal it up with a thank you sticker. And that's it. Thanks for watching.